In the last video, we saw this system of equations, and we found eventually that the solution to the system was x equals 3 sevenths, y equals 11 sevenths. How could we have done that, though, without any guesswork? There are two methods that we can use to solve a system of equations, and the first one we're going to see is called the substitution method. What is the substitution method? Recall that we met earlier something that we called the principle of substitution. The principle of substitution just says, anytime we have an expression, we can replace it by another expression that is equal to it. How does that help us here? Well, the first equation tells us that y is equal to this expression with an x in it. What we're going to do is, in the second equation, we're going to take out the y, and instead of the y, we're going to put in this expression that's equal to y. The first equation tells us that the expressions y and 4 thirds x plus 1 represent the same number. So anywhere we see a y in the second equation, we can write 4 thirds x plus 1 instead. Okay, how does that help us? It helps us because we've now combined our two equations to get one equation in one variable. We know how to solve that equation. This is the substitution method. First, we get an expression for one variable in terms of the other. In this problem, we were actually given that. We were given one of our equations in the form y equals stuff with an x in it. We use that to replace one of the variables in the other equation. In this case, we had y equals stuff with x in it, so we replaced the y by stuff with x in it. Now we have an equation in one variable. What do we do with that equation in one variable? Well, we solve it. So in our example, we had x plus 4 thirds x plus 1 equals 2. In this equation, the parentheses aren't doing anything, so we can drop them. x plus 4 thirds x plus 1 equals 2. These are like terms, so we can combine them. Notice that x invisibly has a coefficient 1 here. Adding 1 plus 4 thirds, make it a fraction, we get 7 thirds x plus 1 equals 2. Subtract 1 from both sides, 7 thirds x equals 1. And finally, we can think of this next step as multiplying by 3 sevenths or as dividing by 7 thirds and we get x equals 3 sevenths, which we knew was going to be the solution. Okay, so that was actually a lot of work to find out what x was. Right, we had to make that substitution, and then we had to solve an equation in one variable. Finding out what y is now that we know x is going to be much easier. To find the value of the other variable, we're just going to substitute what we just found into one of the original equations. So our equations were y equals 4 thirds x plus 1 and x plus y equals 2. I'm going to choose this first one because when I plug x in there, I'm not going to have to do any algebra. I've got y equals 4 thirds times 
I discovered that x is 3 sevenths plus 1. And that is 4 thirds times 3 sevenths plus 1 is 11 sevenths. That's all there is to it. So our solution is the x we found in step 3 together with the y we found in step 4. Now if we want to check that that answer is correct, and I usually do because this is a process where it's very easy to make mistakes, we just used the first equation to find out the solution we'll use the second equation to check the solution. So we'll say x is 3 sevenths, y is 11 sevenths, add those together, I do in fact get 2, so that's correct. Okay, let's see one more example. Say we want to solve the system x minus 4y equals 6 and 2x plus 3y equals 1 using substitution. How would we do that? Looking at this system, I see that neither one of my equations is currently in the form x equals something or y equals something. So in step one of the process, I need to get one of the equations in the form x equals something or y equals something. If I see it somewhere, I will choose an equation where one of my variables has coefficient 1. If it's available, I will choose that. In this example, I see that in my first equation, x has coefficient 1. So I'm going to choose to solve the first equation for x. And again, I'm making that choice because x has coefficient 1. So x minus 4y is 6. Add 4y to both sides. And I get x equals 4y plus 6. Note that the coefficient 1 made this easy. Okay, now that I have this equation written as x equals stuff with a y in it, I'm going to replace x in my second equation. So in my second equation I have 2x plus 3y equals 1. Instead of the x, I'm going to write this expression that's equal to x. Note the parentheses here. We need to have the entire 4y plus 6 multiplied by 2, because the entire 4y plus 6 is what's equal to x. So, now we have an equation with only y as a variable. We want to solve it. So, 2 times 4y plus 6 plus 3y is 1. We'll distribute 8y plus 12 plus 3y is 1. We'll combine the like terms. 8y plus 3y is 11y. Subtract 12 on both sides. We get 11y is negative 11. And finally, divide both sides by 11 to get y equals negative 1. OK. Now we have the value of one of our variables. The rest of this is going to be easy. Our original equations were 
x minus 4y equals 6 and 2x plus 3y equals 1. I'm going to choose this first equation to plug into because I think it'll make the algebra a little bit easier. I'll have x minus 4 times negative 1 is 6. That is x plus 4, right? Minus negative 4 is plus positive 4 equals 6. Subtract 4 on both sides and I get x equals 2. So my solution, x is the 2 that I just found and y is the negative 1 that I found a moment ago. Okay, and now I'm going to check by plugging into the other equation. So 2 times 2 plus 3 times negative 1, that's 4 minus 3, which is in fact 1. So that actually checks out.